Everyone is talking about going live and live streaming, whether it's on YouTube, Zoom, Instagram, all the things, all the platforms, because it's right now, this is the perfect way to launch and scale your business. But sometimes it's difficult to know how to have a successful live stream so that it grows not only your audience, but also your bank account. Because if it isn't growing an audience or a bank account, it can basically just be a waste of time. But here's the really good news. It doesn't have to be complicated to have a great, successful live stream. You can just have a phone. You can just have a laptop. That's how we started. We've done thousands yeah. of live streams. Keep it simple. We've created free content with live streams. We've live streamed paid programs. Challenges, But boot we camps. hit six figures for the first time in one month only from an iPad and a That's selfie right. stick. So don't yeah. let equipment hold you back. First of all, welcome to the Marketing Mindset and Moolah Show. My name is Tristan, and this is my beautiful wife, Sabrina. And together, we have been teaching and sharing and speaking uh, for many decades now. We've had our own schools here in Austin, Texas, and we've gone online 100%. And so this show is about helping you build a wildly profitable, love-based business. And today, the show is really focusing on our top secrets that we've used to be able to attract a following, also known as an audience, and then convert those fans into paying customers and clients. So that's what we have for you today. Yeah, now I know it can be difficult to get started, but trust us, you want to get started, yes, and here's do. why. Let me read the statistic. We have some notes for you. <laughs> this quote is from Cisco 2021. Professionals anticipate that 82% of internet use will be for streaming live videos by 2022. Now it's almost 2022. And I think you want to be in the 82%, right? If 82% of internet use will be for consuming live videos, live video. that's where you want to be. I like that other and one too. Forrester.com says, live video holds the user's attention up to 20 times longer than pre-recorded or on demand video. So even though your live videos becomes a pre-recorded later, there's still a different flavor to it yes. because you can tell that uh, we're actually live with live people energy. and engaging. So you definitely want to get in on this. We're going to teach you so much in this episode. Tristan said we're fire hosing them. We're fire hosing. We are fire hosing. But here's the good news. Um, we put everything we're going to say today and more in a checklist. It's very pretty, it's professional. We spent a lot of time making it. And it is our ultimate go live checklist. And it's what we've learned after going live so many times of everything you need to do before you go live, during and after. So here's the link. You can go and grab a copy of that later. And we're being cool by giving you the link early because most people make you wait to the end. So <laughs> And also that down. when you get it, there is an invitation to get a program that goes along with that. So make sure you uh, check out the video on the page. So that's satorimethod.com forward slash go live. That's your link. And if you're new to our work or you just want to get notified of the different times that we're going to be going live, the different topics that we're going to cover in our show, you'd like to get notifications, make sure you head on over here <laughs> to satorimethod.com forward slash showbiz. You know, if you're just one of those people that just like, oh just my love gosh, I love getting notified. Would you please notify me every time you go live? Bonnie's Don't worry. One of those people. We don't do it. We just, <laughs> when we have a new show coming out, we'll keep you in the loop. We'll let you know how to get the replays. We'll give you the resources and stuff because we put um, a lot of time and energy into uh, creating this show mm -hmm. and this is not going to be fluff. We're literally giving you strategies and people will tell you, I would have paid for that. And that's how we plan to roll. Totally. Cool. All right, let's do it. All right. So let's dive into our top three strategies for highly successful live streams. Our first one, kicking this off, is prepare to live stream. I mean, I think everybody gets that word, prepare. You've got to prepare. You've got to be ready to go. Well, there's some depth to that preparation. And so we're going to give you some of the tips out of the checklist and some of the freestyle tips that we've got for you today. We've got lots of notes here, so we're going to go, be go going down through them. Um, I would say this. Uh, you don't want to wing it. You want to have structure. You want to have a really nice outline. And one of the most important things to, to start with is to know the purpose. 
of your life. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people will just wing it and riff. And there's some pros who can do that. Yeah. They've been doing so many different lives that they can tap in. They can mm -hmm. get a download. They know their audience. They, they have a bunch of stories already mm -hmm. in their story inventory. They know what's coming up for them in, like, let's say, their promotional calendar. So they can just go live and connect and yeah. seed what they want to have happen. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that in the beginning. Right. I guess it's kind of like maybe your grandma. You can just, the grandkid could say, I want some cookies. And she doesn't get out a recipe. She doesn't pre-mix the dry and the wet. She just knows how to throw everything in the bowl because she's made cookies so many a gazillion times. times are, right. are you could, anybody could ask me at any time, hey, get up and teach some basic salsa. I don't have to prepare because I've taught 10,000 salsa lessons, right? So I'm sure you have something like that in your life. And when you go live enough, live becomes that way for you. Now, some people have told us, I went live and it didn't work. <laughs> How many times did you go live? Yeah. I did it to my audience and they didn't respond. Yeah. Well, I've got to put up yeah. this guy right here. That, by the way, is uh, Benjamin Franklin, and that is his cell phone right there. Mm -hmm. And what Benjamin says is, if you uh, fail to prepare, then prepare to fail right so preparation is essential so let's go through some of the prep it would be topics. like saying um i went to the gym once and like nothing really happened or i, I, I didn't lose any weight. i didn't get any muscle i worked out last year but <laughs> i don't see a big difference right? there's there's consistency to yeah. this thing so let us give you a nice structure for your preparation so the first mm -hmm. one really is having a clear mission why are you doing the show or why are you doing the live stream? What is this about? Mm -hmm. So some of the things that you should be thinking about is obviously to grow a following, also known as an audience, to get fans, to get people who are like, hey, I like them or I like her. She knows what mm -hmm. she's talking about, right? So to grow a following, then so important, and a lot of people miss this on social media, they're not growing their email list. They're not giving freebies and opportunities to get on the email list. And you want to have data. You want to have people in your database, you right? So that you can follow up with them because what if the social media platform changes, algorithms change and you can't reach those people anymore. So to grow your following, to grow your email list, to get people to sign up for a workshop or maybe to invest in a program, yeah, yeah. sales, anybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so prepare with the end in mind, where are you going and then work your way back to the content. So if I know that at the end of the day, we've got a program coming out and that we want to get people uh, educated on the benefits of that program, then we'll start there and we'll work all the way back and our content will reflect and build towards that offer. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. And secondly, as far as preparing, uh, the kind of the obvious, if they can't see you or if they can't hear you or if your video is glitchy, they're not going to watch. They're going to tune out. So, so what yeah. do you do? Have good lighting, face a window or put some light lighting. in front of you. Make sure the sound is good. Is there too much ambient sound coming from other things? Can they hear you? Reboot your device, right. close other windows, put your phone on do not disturb, put your spouse on do not disturb. <laughs> <laughs> put your dogs on do not <laughs> Whatever disturb. Whatever you need to do. And, and check out the location that's behind you. I know once we went to a wedding and we were all dressed up and we were sitting, it was this outdoor beautiful wedding and we're looking at it and we hold up the phone and we take a picture of ourselves. It was a and video, we didn't right? know. No, we were in front of a dumpster. Oh my God. It was not a dumpster. It was porta potties. It was porta potties. It was porta potties. <laughs> we were like all dressed and there's this porta potties. It was a great social media post though. Be aware of your surroundings. But see, we were seeing what was in front of us. So you gotta, also, you gotta also have good things. internet. Make sure you have your cell phone has a good internet signal or your mm -hmm. home has a good internet signal. Okay. These are some of the things that make a huge difference in our live streams. Yeah. Okay. So promoting. You got to get the word out there, right? You need to create a bit of a buzz. Now, yeah. if you already have a following or an email list, then you let them know, like we let you Ahead guys know. Yeah, we're going live at this time. Try to be consistent with when you go live. Get people knowing about it. Create an event that says that you're going live and share that around in the different places that you're allowed to share it, right? Yeah. Get the word out there. Yeah, kind of, kind of hype it up. Because when you when you say I'm not just I'm going live, but I'm going live and I'm gonna share this with you. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to tell you about that, which sort of leads to the next thing in preparing is who are you talking to, right? You're not doing this live for toddlers and seniors, right? Who, who are you talking to and what do they feel like? Hmm. And what's the conversation going on in their head as far as 
the way they want to improve their life or their business that you can tap into and actually help them. So you feel them, and I really do mean feel them, like energetically, kind of that, that compassion and that resonance so you can better know how you can help them. That's huge, and, right? And that's the place that you prepare the title of your live stream, or you can call it the su- like a subject line of an email. That's your billboard. That's your call out. That's you're driving down the street and a new movie open and you look up and it says the name of the movie. That name better be good. It better either evoke curiosity or I want to see that. So choose the title, the name of your live stream and put some time into it where that person that you want to help will read that and it will speak to what's already going on in their head. And then to, to feel like prepared, we're not saying like script every line and run a teleprompter, although a lot of people do. I developed a technique that we use called the bookends. And this has really helped us and really helped our students. You prepare the first thing you're gonna say, which is probably really similar to the name of the live stream, which sort of tells them the problem that you're gonna solve. And that way you can start your live stream clean and you don't have to be nervous or ramble. And then you think about what uh, Tristan mentioned earlier. What is that call to action? What was the point of all of this? What are you going to offer them, give to them, ask them to do at the end? Mm -hmm. So those are your two bookends. And then in between that, maybe have like three points you want to cover. One, two, three. And then let everything else go with the flow or let the chat feed it. But if at least you have those two bookends with those like three books in there, you're going to feel safe. And you're less likely to ramble at the end, which we all do until we learn not to. Yeah, that's a big one, right? And she said it, know your call to action. It's called a CTA. Mm -hmm. So get them to like, follow, subscribe, share, register, um, click a link to go Mm -hmm. and invest, uh, investigate a product or program. Um, When Sabrina was talking about knowing the problem that you're solving, that's going to feed if you are going to pre-promote um, and tell people about this, you've got to tell them what to look forward to, what to expect. It's sort mm-hmm. of like you're teasing it. So once you've got that figured out, you know what problem you're going to solve. It's called a hook, right? It's a messaging hook. Once you know what that is, and you do need to study your market, and you need to study your people, and you need to ask them questions, you might not have those hooks great in the beginning, but over time, you'll get better and better because you'll be receiving more feedback. Mm-hmm. And people will, so you'll ask them, what do you guys need help with the most? What would you love to learn the most? Another thing that we've done to great, create good title hooks, or like Sabrina said, subject line for an email, go to uh, like magazine covers. And you can look at these like in the, the store. We do it at the airport a lot. Uh, we used <laughs> to use one called uh, Prevention Magazine. And we just Google it, Prevention Magazine Covers. And you go to the image section mm-hmm. and you have all these incredible hooks. They're short. Hooks yeah, are short. Great. And you could borrow one of those and turn it into something that fits for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. The hook is so important. That's right. Cool. So those are the things, the top things that we do to prepare, Mm -hmm. to prepare for the live stream, to prepare with purpose. The ultimate purpose down the road is profit, right? But at first it might be growing a fan and then turning that fan into a client and that client into a high paying customer. This was just about prepare. If you'd like a copy of our free checklist, which is Go Live with Confidence, the ultimate checklist, and it's what you do before, during, and after, it's totally free. Go grab a copy. Go grab a copy right there. It's got all of the techie things that you need to remember, all, and it's got check boxes so you can go through them like a shopping list. And you can train yourself so that they become almost automated, yeah. and you do them without thinking. Mm-hmm. It's really, we use this resource to help us even now because there's always little things you don't want to forget them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, if you're new to what we've got going on here and you'd like to get notifications to the next topic that we'll be covering, the time, the day that we'll be going live, go ahead and jot that down right there at satorimethod.com forward slash showbiz. Now remember what, it's the Boy Scouts. What do they say? Oh, darn it. What do they say? Be prepared. Always be prepared. (laughs) Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing? We just want to connect in. (laughs) Thanks for joining today. And thanks for um, letting us teach you some of these uh, strategies that we've been working on for a couple of years now. I guess 
was it what was the year that Facebook Live actually kicked up? I think it was 2016. It was late in 2016, I believe. I do not have I'm that not data. Not 100% sure, but I know it's been like five years. So if it was Barbara probably 2016. Was here, she she Google it for us. <laughs> but we we started going live before Facebook Live um, with something called Google right Hangouts. Right after Benjamin Franklin. Right after Ben. Yeah, we were using Google Hangouts and we were using some webinar software back in the day. But it wasn't until like right now, this communication and connection with you guys that we have in the live chat, right? Radhika says, fantastic tips. Thank you. And you're so welcome. Cherish says the same thing. Thank you. You both are great. We appreciate that. Mia's here. There's lots more to come. There's more. <clears throat> We're just getting started. Thank you so much, everybody. Very cool. <laughs> I like Why it. do you scratch my leg? I don't get it. Oh, I don't What think, does it mean? Uh, it's sometimes... Okay, so I scratch his leg. Under, under that, the, might, that might mean stop talking. That might I don't mean, know what it means. That, that might mean it's time for a fresh beat. Can it I, might just then it can meant... You have, let's do like one scratch <laughs> means stop talking. Two quick scratches means let's start the next section. Okay. And three scratches is... How about a poke means something's wrong? A poke. A poke. We're going to have to practice this. Okay, so this means... <laughs> what's that mean? What's that mean? A poke, something's wrong. Okay, what does that mean? Two scratches. Uh -huh. That means it's the next section. Okay, and... One scratch just means Tristan stop talking. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we got a whole system down here. Okay, ready? Next section. <laughs> you guys getting all this? <laughs> Do you ever dread going to a party or maybe it's an, a business event where you don't know anyone and you, you don't really want to go and you're pretty sure you're not going to have anything in common with them and you're just going to be watching the clock the whole time. But then something crazy happens. You meet someone and you start having a conversation, this conversation that is really connects the two of you. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that person, that party that you thought was just going to be a bunch of strangers, that person becomes one of your very best friends. Well, that's what happens when you have a successful live stream. You start having these connected conversations mm -hmm. with the people that show up in your chat, and it converts them from a stranger to a fan, a fan to a client, a to client a to a VIP. Yeah. Yeah, to, and this happened to me. I was one of Lisa Sasevich's top affiliate partners, and we were vi invited to her beach house. And there was just a handful of other people. So our mastermind. Yeah, mastermind. Yeah. And I met Kim Walsh Phillips, and she she was a stranger. Love Kim. And we just we just connected, and we started talking about our love for family, our love for God, our our love to talk really fast. Her silly laugh and my ridiculous giggle, and how we want to help people, and about marketing. And immediately, we were converted from strangers to <laughs> practically besties and still are. Yeah, yeah. And that was such a good lesson on how this connected conversations, I'm like you, you're like me, we want the same thing, we see this thing the same way. That's your tribe, and that's what you want to have happen during your live stream. Now, the question you may be asking is, mm. how do you do it? How oh, do you make that happen? How do we connect? What are all the things that you guys do? In fact, it's happening right now. People are sharing live in the chat about how much they're enjoying this because we're just being ourselves. Yeah. We're flowing. We're having this opportunity to connect with those of you who are watching live or even in the replay, which is so crazy yeah. because you can be watching the replay and someone can comment and you'll get notified and you can go and say, hey, Daryl, so glad you made yeah. it to the show. And it could be like a week mm -hmm. or two weeks later. Yep. Right? And oftentimes I could be watching a live that isn't really live. It's a replay of live, but I don't know it. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you feel, feel like you're way. in there. It's like when you watch a sitcom. Um, when, you, when you film a, a sitcom in Hollywood, the audience would actually be there the day that we would film, which mm -hmm. was a, oftentimes a Friday. And you do it twice in front of two live audiences. So you get the, some of that laughter in the can and you really feel like you're a part of it. But then when you're watching it at home, like a Friends episode that's 15 <laughs> years old and you're laughing, you're still laughing 
and you hear the other people in the studio laughing, and you feel like you're laughing with them. Right. That's what replays feel like to me. Yeah, they're incredible. So we've kind of talked about a couple of these things in the prepare phase, but now you're actually doing them. So one thing that we do is we go live a little bit early, and everybody can do that. If you have a scheduled time and you've notified people, whether it's on social media or you've emailed them or you've just called them up, you've texted, you actually used the phone and said, hey, Susie, I'm going live tomorrow. Like whatever it is you've connected with people and told them, then go live a little bit early because that helps to stimulate that algorithm. And next, we mention the word hook. Get the hook, which is basically what's in it for them. Why should they listen to today's session or class mm -hmm. or show? What are you going to teach them? What are you going to help them with? And tell them that right out the gate. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then when it's live, connect like we do. Yeah. Hi, yeah. how are you? What's going on? Yeah. Where are you at? <laughs> People, uh, human beings, we like to feel safe. We like to think we know what's happening. And, right. and that's in a classroom or even in a so social situation. We like to hear from a friend. Let's say they invite us to do something. Hey, why don't you come over at around 6 o'clock? We'll have drinks. And then around 7, mm. we'll head out to have dinner. We'll right go on. to this place. And then yeah. afterwards, we'll stop by there. Like that feels good rather than just come over at for me, come over at six and we'll see how things go. And I'm like, I might not like how things go. <laughs> I'm not good with just see how it goes. Yeah. So, so you tell them that also because you want your call out to attract your right fit client. And when you say what your live is about and what they're going to learn, your right fit client will stay and the people taking up space that aren't your right fit will leave and make room for the other people. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about the warming up that you mentioned. Okay. Warming up is... It has to do with your own energy because your energy, whatever you're radiating, that frequency is going to pull that out of others and also attract that in others. I feel that. And I remember I went to a filming of one of the late night shows like a Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel. And of course they had like a comedian come out and warm up the audience beforehand so that energy's going. They do the same thing when you go watch a sitcom being filmed. But then I was surprised that actually the host came out himself. Early. Early and said, hello, welcome, we're so glad you're here and made that connection with the audience mm. before they ever started the actual broadcast. So that's one of the reasons the audience feels so comfortable ahead of time. And that's why it's good mm. to, to have the warm up with, with your audience. And that's what's, if, if you wanna cut it off, you can, but it really sets the tone and gets I the energy that. up so you're all on the same page. It makes a big difference. And you feel like you went backstage, Yeah. right? And so it kind of makes people wanna show up on time or even early, which is what you want, right? Mm -hmm. More engagement, the better. Uh, here's a really important tip when you are live, look into what's called the camera, mm -hmm. really the lens. Like, yeah. but here's something cool that happens over time. The camera kind of disappears and you don't even see it anymore. You know what you see? You see souls. You see people. Like there's a thing right here called a camera and I'm looking at it. It's literally dissolved for me over time. I see eyes. Yeah. I see you guys. I feel, feel. you. I feel mm -hmm. you. Something takes place in your brain after doing this a, few, you know, a bunch of times. It's like you, you start to almost superimpose the per like you know how some people put a picture of a person like next to a camera so they can learn how to try to connect with a human you start to see them almost just there you feel them and then you see them i know that sounds like a little out there but it's a real thing it, it really happens it's mm -hmm. happening right now yeah. and you guys you get it right yep. you, f you feel it you yep. feel the connect it's not phony at all mm -hmm. not at all okay another way because what we're just reeling you in that we're talking about how to have conversations that connect and convert is through storytelling. Yes. When you're teaching, use as many stories as possible because, mm. and this is fascinating study of the brain, when I tell a story, my story about my dog and my dad and my elementary school teacher. Exactly. You're hearing it mm -hmm. and your brain can't but help but think about your dog and your elementary school teacher and your father. So right. your stories are their stories. And know that when you're sharing it because you can really be specific and vulnerable and know that your story is their story. And then always remember to bounce. You wanna talk about the bounce? You love the bounce. Bounce is everything. Bounce is you bouncing, just like if you were having a normal conversation with a person. You know when someone just talks about themselves the whole time, how you're like, 
Ooh, can't wait till they shut up, right? Like sometimes people do a monologue when they're doing their lives. And don't forget, like most of this is on social media. So we're coming here to have a good time. We're looking for uh, a release. We're looking for a connection. We're looking for some entertainment, not a lecture, educational yeah, yeah. scholastic approach. So don't do that. Like talk to a friend and mm -hmm. give them a chance to breathe and feel <laughs> like they're connecting back. So totally. even if there's not a lot of people on the live with you, What's great is even if just one person's there, you can start the bounce. Yeah. Uh, let's say that uh, Bonnie, Bonnie just jumped up and Bonnie's there. I may or may not use Bonnie's name. A lot of the times you should. You should really connect with your tribe member. But someone might say something that provokes the bounce. I love what you guys are saying or I love what Bonnie just said about how she does these movements mm -hmm. before she goes live that helps her to feel really relaxed and focused. It's such a great tip. Thank yeah. you, Bonnie, for that. I just bounced, right? Mm -hmm. It's a conversation. Yeah. And Truman Compote, I wrote this down. He said, a conversation is a dialogue, not a monologue. And that's so great. And I've learned, and Sabrina's helped me learn this over time, you don't even need a live audience to bounce. Right. You superimpose them mm -hmm. into the conversation. And you might be saying things like, so today we're going to be covering X, Y, Z. And I know that this can really help you because it's going to solve this problem and give you this outcome. And maybe you're wondering, how exactly is that going to work? Do you get that? You hear where I'm coming from? That was a bounce. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. You're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just practice. It'll come to you. Or even just saying, I'm sure you have something like that in your life. Did yes. your grandmother just make cookies without now a recipe? you've bounced it into their brain and they're like, you're right, I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's the bounce. And, okay, another topic that we want to get to as far as conversations that connect and convert is tell your viewers what you want them to do mm -hmm. exactly, what action you want them to take, because everyone wants to maybe be supportive of you. And so even though for you it might be obvious, you if, could say to them, hey, would you guys let me know in the chat where you're from, where you're tuning into? Could you let me know what if kind my of business volume you have? Okay? Yeah. Especially in the beginning, that's like <clears throat> warming up with simple, simple answers. And then if they're kind of scared to participate by the time you get to maybe the deeper, more important questions that you want to ask them, they will have already been used to engaging and participating in the chat because it's super fun, but a lot of people are, are scared to start. So throughout the uh, live stream, keep telling them what you want them to do. And that way, when you give them the call to action at the end, like your main call to action, like go download this thing or go like this or go buy this or go check this out, yeah. they will be used to you suggesting things for them to do Micro. and then following up on it and having good results because you've developed trust. Those are called micro engagements or micro steps. So the more little things and people feel safe doing that, you're helping them to create a momentum of being uh, into this, being a yes. Um, remember to smile. And the smile comes from here. It's true. It doesn't come from here. It's not ever plastic. Like actually feel really good. You're sharing your life. You're sharing your wins. You're sharing your struggle and success. That feels good in the soul, baby. So your <laughs> face should light up, right? And if it's not, yeah. go and practice feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> because when you go live, don't be a grumpy grump. Yeah. And watch out, especially when you're with a person, that you don't get that relaxed itch face. When the other person is talking. <laughs> Remember to stay engaged. Yeah. If you stay in your heart, it's easy to, to be glowing. The, and, the other thing is if you're... Um, one of those people like me who I can see pretty good all of the time, but maybe when I'm reading a little bit of writing, I should use my glasses, but I don't feel like taking them on and off. And then I go to read the comments. I might make a face that for me is just, I'm kind of trying to read, but it could look like someone's writing something in the comments that really irritated me. Right? So when you're, when you're reading the comments, exactly. again, have a pleasant look on your face because your face is all anyone is staring at the whole time and they're feeling off of your energetic frequency. So keep your energy up. I'm even, don't, don't bounce around too much because it'll make someone feel like they're on a boat, but definitely move your body and express and emote. And sometimes we'll like use, you know, a prop or, you know, like we'll get up or we'll reach back and, and do a move. Like be in your body, keep your energy up. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So 
We kind of covered、um, keeping your energy up. Yes. Get the viewers involved. Keep telling them what to do. Reward participation with compliments, smiles. You can even give away prizes. I'm going to reward it right now. Yes, you guys are awesome. By the way, I can't <laughs> wait to share your chats. And remember to deliver a clear call to action so everyone knows what's expected of them. Beautiful, beautiful. This is all the things that you need to do during your live stream to have those conversations that connect and convert. If you would like a copy of our checklist that also tells you what to do before, deeper into during and after, you can download a copy of it right here. And when you register to get your copy, there'll be an invitation if you'd like to pick up our course that goes with it at a huge, huge discount.、Um, that's what we're doing for you. SatoriMethod.com forward slash go live for that free checklist. It's really good. And if you'd like to be reminded of what's going on over here in Satori Central, go to SatoriMethod.com forward slash showbiz and we'll keep you in the loop. You guys. That was the baby beat. Did you catch it? Did you catch the beat? <laughs> It's so fun being able to teach you what we're doing while we're live. I've got to put some of this into the. I mean, this is really beautiful. You guys. Oh, are, he put a he put a sticker, Bonnie. Oh, I put a sticker. I mean, she's probably like, I want one of those. It's not a. It's real, but it's not like real. You know what I mean?、Um, let's see, Radhika. The connection comes from the heart. The two of you. So the conversations become a family gathering. I love that. That's really beautiful. Oh, who said that?、Um, let's see. At least yours went, and I'm going to put it back up. Oh, there's one bounce. Here we go. You、uh, seeing us feeling this isn't a little out there, Sensei. I feel like you and Sabrina can feel my love. We can because of the way that you write and connect and share, and you're beautiful at that. You do that really, really well.、Um, Anne said, "So true. I love the part about meeting someone totally not planned and how you connect." It jives with the lives. Look at you! You're getting pretty hooky right there. <laughs> Two scratches, a poke, and a pinch. <laughs> that、that's, sounds like Grandma's recipe. That's a good one. And I love this from Roberta. She says,、um, "You know what I love about watching your lives? You're just yourselves. Authentic, fun, warm, and engaging. Easy on the viewer to stay with you. Aww, thank you for thank that. You. That's beautiful. Awesome, awesome. All right, we do have another little training." Little、mm -hmm. juicy training. Let's do it. Live stream, live stream, live stream. Everybody's saying, "Go live, go live, go live." What's all the fuss about? Why is everybody talking about this? Well, I'll tell you what. Live streams completely blew up our business and changed our lives. Yeah, baby. And it has to do with how you leverage your live streams,、mm -hmm. and that's what we're digging into right now. That's right. I kind of came up with a. I think it's funny, funny term, and I call it life. After live stream, or the afterlife of a live stream. So we are talking about what do you do after you've gone、mm -hmm. live now, and how do you leverage all of this incredible content that you've been? Maybe just one live stream. How do you leverage it, or、yeah. a bunch of them,、mm -hmm. right? So here's some of our tips. Well, one of the things that we do right away is go and change the title, the subject line, what we call the post description, if needed. If needed, because a lot of times ahead of time we'll say, "Hey, going live tomorrow, two o'clock." There'll be some time specific things, and then knowing how how your live stream unfolded, you may have covered something that you didn't plan to that was really genius that you、mm. want to mention.、Yep. You you may be able to come up with some bullet points. You put that in the description part, right? Yeah. Before we go live, we don't put links to things because、right. people will misunderstand and think you're just. Uh, trying to sell them something without delivering content. Good tip. So we go back in and and change it if need be,、mm -hmm. and put in any any links and update it. And then if we wanted to、uh, trim the beginning off or the end off, you can do、um, that just to, to make it tight.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have software for that, so you can go in and cut. Like if you started and, and it was a little weird, or you、yeah. wanted to cut out that initial、uh, engagement. Yeah, because most people. Let's say you know, for us, let's say a few hundred people showed up for a live. How many are going to show up for the replays? Not just tomorrow and the next day, but over the years and years and years and years, a whole lot.、Right. So your live stream is live and it's amazing, but the real work of it, you're going to reap the rewards for a very long time. So one、yep. thing you also want to do is share it across. 
uh, let's say you're on Facebook and you went live on your business page, put it in your groups. Ask other people, hey, if you love this, put it on your page so you can come back and see it whenever you want. Um, send out an uh, email. Hey, if you, if you miss the live stream, here's a way to go and watch the replay. Let's, because let's remember, dig into that a little bit okay. as you're, you're going. The calls to action. If they watch the replay, they're still going to get your calls to action. I like what she said. Yes, thank you. And the replay, you can take a screen capture of, and Sabrina does this really, really well. And so she'll take a funny picture of us. Like you just get to the point in the video where it's funny and pause it and then take a screen capture and put that in the email and attach a link to it. So people are more likely to click on those and that'll take them back to your live. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other things I think uh, we can um, boost the post. We like to do that. Mm -hmm. So boosting in Facebook in particular is very simple. You can click on the boost button and uh, it'll show that to you after you've gone live. It's a blue button. And then you can target different types of people, people who are already like mm -hmm. if you have a business page, which you kind of need to yeah. be able to do this. So yeah. Yes. I want to show you a slide that we made and I just did a real quick screenshot of just four lives that were in the library on our Facebook page. So. These were four kind of recent lives, and you can see 8,500 views. That was a workout when the gym was closed. Tristan like drove down the street, went on the rooftop of a building. That's like a parking yeah, facility. Top of the parking garage. And he just went live on his phone, and 8,500 people viewed it. Um, next to that, it was his birthday, and we were like, it was the Trisbrina show, 6,000 people. This was like things to do to stay young and healthy, even though the body's getting older. Below that was a, a class that we did together, 5,900 views. But here's the one, the one that's 13,000 views. That was an episode of our show mm -hmm. where we taught a reverse breathing technique. Now, we're always coming up with different topics. And I guarantee you, the most people that attended any of those four live, I'm going to say 200. Probably not even that live. I don't know. But look at how many times people have watched those replays. Now, what does that tell us? Well, number one, it tells us it's worth your time to do lives in order to create a library of content mm -hmm. so that at the point where you become an overnight success, which does not exist, and they go to look for you and look at you, you have a library of things that you've been doing, even though you're an overnight success. So you're building a library so you can be binge worthy. You know, people may have just found out about us and gone and watched a bunch of those videos. How else did they get the views? So that's really good. But here's to me the thing that I was going to talk about with the reverse breathing. That is such incredible data for us. Like it's this one right here. She's talking about this one where we did this Taoist reverse breathing technique. Mm -hmm. Look at the hook, by the way. Tonight, discover Taoist reverse breathing. Strengthen lungs, calm emotions, and increase meditative dot, dot, dot. What? Yeah. So curiosity Yeah. W won the day there. So just from seeing how many views that had, we've actually used teaching breathing techniques several times because we know it draws a big audience. And it's great free content. The more people we have consuming our free content, the more people we have to make our offers to. Right. So some people like to use quizzes and ask questions. We like to go live and ask questions in the chat. And remember, the chat doesn't die when the live is over. The chat People keep chatting even as they're watching all of the replays. So you're constantly getting data and feedback and questions and growing your audience. They're still seeing the calls to action in that live stream yep. and the offers that we made then. And it's really great if you do keep an eye on your lives, meaning afterwards, go back and like and love the comments, yes. respond to that's, questions that's and comments. Really good. Look, if you're serious about growing a business mm -hmm. and you want to use online social media strategies and you want to benefit from all the eyeballs that are happening through live video, then you'll invest some time in it. Yeah, We have, and we're living our dream. We get to live where we want to live. We get to go where we want to go and we get to serve the people that we really want to serve. Mm -hmm. And so from my heart, I will tell you that learning how to do this changed everything. We just figured it out. We're sharing with you guys some things that are going to jump you forward big time. Mm -hmm. 
The only way to learn anything is to do it, but you want to have a good plan. Like yeah. we said, prepare. Yeah. This is a really good outline, as, as is this, and we'll give you that link again, so that you know what you're doing. But you're not going to know it all before you go live. You're going to have to practice. Yeah. You can set up a practice group mm -hmm. so that you can just do it. But you just have to be consistent at it. And people are very forgiving with a live. It doesn't need to be perfect and polished. This hasn't been a perfect polished show today. We have friends and that's all they do is they film their show and they turn it into a podcast and they edit it and yeah. make it perfect. And that's great. And we could do that too. But the connection is missing for us. If we do that, yeah. this is real time. Mm -hmm. This is real energy connection. Yeah. And that's what's enabled us to do, grow not only a business that's highly lucrative, but a business that fills our souls because yeah. you're our friends. You're people that we want to, to break bread with, right? Mm -hmm. And the people who aren't meant to be listening to your lives, they're going to go bye-bye. Yeah. They'll just move on. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Yep. But you'll only have that real connection with people if you're consistent and you're mm -hmm. willing to connect. Yep all the things and and you leverage like we were talking about leveraging the live yep. streams uh some you can strip the audio yep. and send it to it. people just to listen to if you have a good live stream like the reverse breathing or a lot of the ones that we've done you can use it as bonuses right with your That's paid good. courses we have packaged replays of our lives together and sold them as courses to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Right. So every time you go live, you're creating a piece of content. You can um, take a funny thing from it and make a story. Like a you can yeah, you can pull quotes that you said. You can. This is one that we do that's funny. We play our live, let's say on a laptop, and take the phone. And just film like and film just a little bit of it film and your, make a content snippet and then say if you want to see the full thing, sense. go and watch it here. Just so film it off your monitor. The the ways to leverage and repurpose a live stream are endless. Yeah. It's just about getting creative and then maybe you want to keep a log of what you did. Or if you did it all in the same place, that's sort of logged for you. But never think, oh, I did it, it's over, hardly anybody showed up. No, no, no. You, you do every live stream as if the 13,000 people are already there Heck yeah. and as if there's just one person 100%. there. You deliver fully. Mm -hmm. You're creating this library of content. You're learning. You're growing. You're getting feedback. You have bonuses from the questions that come in. You know what your audience wants next. You know, that's what I'm loving. All of these comments coming in. I'm like, oh, great. Now I know. I know what you're loving. I know what you don't understand. I know what we can do more episodes for. It's a, it's a treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. So you want to leverage your lives. That's the big takeaway. So this is the phase after you're done. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that video? Don't let it, you know, die on the vine, so to speak. Go in there, bring it to life. Keep re, re in, uh, repurposing it, putting it in other places. Wrap back around like Sabrina said. Bundle it up. Download it. Turn it into a gift. Share it. Mm -hmm. Take all these tips. Grab this. Grab this. Okay. Go this grab our, this. Our There's... go live with confidence checklist. There the it is. leveraging is what you do after. This is the checklist for before, during, and after. Everything you need to check off to run a successful Facebook live broadcast. It could be YouTube too uh, or Instagram TV before, during, and after. So you can go live with confidence and attract a flood of quality folks to your programs, products, and services. This really will help you. <laughs> Okie dokie. Smile, baby beat. Baby beat. Bump, bump. All right, so we hope you got a lot out of today's training and that you have a deeper understanding and you're excited to do more live streams. Heck yeah. That you have a, the ability to have a clear purpose, that you know the purpose before you do it. That's everything. A clear, purposeful path, that you know how to have connected conversations that convert mm -hmm. a stranger to a best friend. Mm -hmm. And that you know how to leverage your lives to get the maximum benefit out of it for your business. In the military, they have something called the CI. It's the commander's intent. And so the reason for the CI, basically, it's the mission of the mission. So let's say you're a Navy SEAL and your objective is to go and save the hostages and to um, try to do as l little damage as possible. That's the mission is save the hostages and bring them back to base camp. There's so many variables that can come up on a mission, but always every soldier is told, go back to the CI, the commander's intent. What's the intent? What's the goal 
of the mission, get the hostages back to the base camp. So no matter what shows up while you're live, you always get know, the hostages. get the hostages <laughs> get the across break. the finish line. <laughs> You know the goal. The goal is to get those <laughs> folks into your world. The goal is to turn them into fans. The goal is to get them to join your email list. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to invite them to invest in your product, program, or service. Mm -hmm. You work from the end in mind. Yep. So your live stream can go a hundred different ways and things can happen because it's live, just like a mission. It's live. There are variables. Someone says something. You forget something. You can't find your piece of paper. If you know where you're going, you're going to get there. You'll improvise. You'll figure it out. You'll be yourself. You'll yep. do something you've never done before. And people will be like, that was awesome. Yep. Our best stuff happens when we're just like freestyling, mm -hmm. but we have structure. Yes. And that's what this is before, during, after yep. clean structure, yep. clear goal. Yep. Boom. Live streaming is a legit way to grow your business. The live streaming industry grew 99% between <laughs> April 2019 and April 2020. Insane. This is the perfect time to jump in. You haven't missed the boat. Remember, 82% of all content will be digested online through live video. So get started, get the checklist, and you'll go live with confidence. And there she blows. Go get your checklist. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, for being with us, sharing with us, helping us to make this fun. If it ain't fun, we ain't going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't do it if it's not fun. So it should bring fresh breath and life force into your life when you do these things. And yeah, we get it. You might be a little nervous. You know, there's some technical learning curves and all that, but Look, I'm a martial artist. She's a dance teacher. Look at us go. We're figuring it out. And we're here to help you. So we got yeah. you. And we have, um, Mark, we basically tell our clients, pick one platform and rock that one. Yeah. And then start adding from there. We actually are uh, live right now on Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. And then we will repurpose the content uh, we'll probably turn it into a podcast and then we will repurpose the smaller, shorter snippets. We can tell there'd be three very specific snippets just from this one video. We can cut out the part about um, planning with the purpose or the part about conversations that convert and the part about repurposing and each could stand alone. So that's four pieces of content on Facebook, four pieces on Instagram and a podcast. Get that grooving, and then you could add another platform, unless you just have so much money, you're just like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I just can't. I'm just rolling in the dough here. I don't want any more money. All right, everybody. Thank you for all the comments. Bonnie says she's a willing hostage. I saw that. I just threw some up on the screen for those of you who are enjoying the visual experience. If you've been listening to this, you happen to be on the podcast version of this show, you can go over to satorimethod.com forward slash showbiz and we'll get you the visual experience and all the different goodies and resources that are coming out from us. We are not slowing down. We have a lot to share. We've been doing this for a minute and we want to help our friends. We want to help those holistic practitioners, the teachers, the lovers of life, all of y'alls. We're going to help you. Here for you. Much love. Until next time, see you soon. Oh, we got to dance it out. We stand Always up. dance it out. I'm going to get it with you. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>